All right, Doombots, here we are. Legendary Spotlight, Magneto. So, Magneto is the third legendary, I believe, maybe fourth legendary ever released in the game, uh, if you count Iron Man. <laughs> and he kind of stands the test of time. He's another one of those legendaries where the earlier you get him, the more an impact he has, but he doesn't quite fall off in the endgame. There are... Uh, endgame raid nodes where Magneto becomes incredibly helpful. There are team comps in Mu7 where you can utilize Magneto. Uh, PvP and War Magneto is pretty much a must-have when you start getting into uh, really high TCP wars and fights and, and challenging events. And on top of it, uh, many characters are just good at something. You can kind of see like healers that heal very well Magneto has an ability that no character yet uh, has ever been given. He has the ability to manipulate where enemies are on the map. He can move them. And that is a feature that it never runs out of, of value. So another character very similar to uh, Star-Lord, but a little bit better because the earlier you get Magneto, the immediate impact you will see uh, as you're going forward through the game. And unlike Star-Lord, when you get into major parts of the endgame, you're going to have a lot of value uh, just around him. Whether you use him on offense or defense in war, offense or defense in arena, he's just always going to be a relevant character. And as a result of that, I recommend... He be one of the first legendaries. I've already kind of told you this legendary series is based on what I believe to be the unlock order for the average player, based on how easy they are to get and more realistically how much uh, impact they have when you get them versus, you know, if you just kind of waited for you to eventually be able to unlock them more like a character like Iron Man or Nick Fury where they don't impact you as amazingly as uh, maybe a Star Lord or a Shuri or an Invisible Woman. Magneto's in that pool. I recommend Magneto be the fourth legendary, considering that, you know, Shuri and Invisible Woman can both be unlocked using the same characters. They kind of both hold the slot as the second legendary. It's whichever one happens to be around first. But Magneto, for my money, is the best fourth legendary character you should work towards and a lot of the reasons why is because of the characters it takes so let's take a quick look at the characters it takes to unlock magneto and spoiler alert it's a lot of them let's check right here see this is a ton the character you can't see right behind me is storm it's 13 there are 13 characters in the game that you can use to unlock magneto including phoenix so obviously you're probably not going to be unlocking magneto with phoenix but it is possible that you'll be getting a six-star Magneto when you've unlocked Phoenix if you're not target farming high star ranks on those characters. So just to kind of quick glimpse uh, all of the options, Sabretooth and Cyclops are both raid store character unlocks. Juggernaut and Blob are both arena store character unlocks. Colossus is a late game farm, so you wouldn't necessarily use him to unlock, but he's an option. Uh, Pyro is in the war store. Probably not a high priority, but useful. Toad is a Blitz Store character. Wolverine is given for free. He is the welfare character of the game. You will have a 5-star Wolverine at about 60 days played, so you shouldn't have to worry too much. Storm, Psylocke, and Mystique are node farmable. So there are a lot of options. You can kind of cherry-pick characters from a store, like Juggernaut or Blob from Marina. Uh, basically, you can do Sabretooth, Juggernaut... Uh, and Toad as character farms from stores, and then you could just pick one of the node farms, Storm, Mystique, or Psylocke, uh, to combine with Wolverine and get yourself a Magneto. Um, Beast is clearly not farmable right now, so no real reason to talk about it, but it's there. So because there's 13 characters that unlock Magneto, it's incredibly easy to get him, and because there's so many that are accessible through a lot of points in the game, you don't have to direct target farm them from the day you start playing in order to expect to get a pretty decent chunk of shards on a lot of these characters as you progress. As we've talked about Arena already, you can go from like Drax to Vulture straight to Juggernaut or Blob and 
totally a reasonable amount of farming to get them to five star. Same kind of goes with everything else. So because he's so easy to unlock, uh, I do recommend you get him relatively early. Uh, I would prefer, as a rule, to just kind of unlock characters that you're going to use on that team. Um, even if you just were to use Sabretooth, at least Sabretooth can be used on both the Brotherhood team and the Marauders later, giving him a little bit more value than a character like Cyclops. So don't necessarily target farm Cyclops early. You'll be able to pick up more and more of Cyclops, you know, later as he becomes relevant with characters like Phoenix. Um, same thing with like, Juggernaut and Blob. You have to choose between the two. Juggernaut is always useful with Magneto, and he's always useful outside of Magneto Blob. He's got some PvP value, uh, works very well with Toad on the team, so it's kind of a toss-up between those two. And then the last character, obviously, Mystique makes the most sense because it would complete the team, and when you get a Legendary, you kind of also want to have the team for the Legendary. You don't necessarily want them to be sitting on the ground, with the exception of the characters like Invisible Woman and Shuri, where you don't actually need the teams to unlock them. So that's it for unlocking him. Now we'll go back to Magneto, give a quick review of all of his abilities, and discuss maybe a little bit where you want to uh, use him. And real quick, we'll just check that out. I said check it out. One more. There it is. Okay, so real quick review of Magneto's abilities, starting with, obviously, the Tier 4 level. Uh, on spawn, feel speed bar by 15%, 15% speed bar per Brotherhood ally. That means that on his team, he can go faster than pretty much any other character in the game, with like two or three exceptions. Uh, outside of his team, you can start doing math on how many members of the Brotherhood you have to put on the team for him to go first. Uh, and the faster he goes, the better he goes, for the most part, with very few exceptions. Uh, on enemy crit, uh, apply speed up to self and all Brotherhood allies. Uh, this is where you kind of get a lot of the value in the difference between Tier 4 and Tier 5. He gains 10,000 resistance to taunt, and all Brotherhood allies gain 10,000% or flat resistance to taunt. 60% flat resistance to him and his allies, 60% focus, and 30% max health. They, that goes up from 50, 50, and 20. Huge boost, especially because you're going to be using this team in war, and those that tiny little percentages do add up. The resistance is huge for fighting teams like the mercenaries. The focus is just huge because everything they want to do is focus based. So as far as tier 4 goes, that extra 10%, while it doesn't seem like much, it is applying to every character and can be incredibly relevant. It's one of his best tier 4s. Moving to Magnetic Vortex, this is an ability that literally does everything it needs to well before you know, level 6, so the level 7 is just a damage increase, and he doesn't do much damage to begin with. It's more the utility of what he does. Pull all enemies up to 2 space toward the primary target, then attack primary targets within 2 spaces of the primary for a small amount of damage and apply blind. This attack is unavoidable and cannot be countered. However, the pull itself can be resisted. You'll see characters like uh, very strong shield securities, or Jessica Joneses, or Juggernauts, um, who just have relatively high resistance, might be able to just not move at all when you do this action. So that's one of the reasons why that extra focus is incredibly relevant, especially without factoring in the exact team comp, like whether you have Toad to give extra focus or anything like that. But the extra damage going to 240, not huge not really worth it hasn't ever kind of come across as like oh man i really need that extra damage but if you're really going hard on this team it's not the worst ability you can upgrade because you are probably going to fire this ability off uh the beginning of the turn and a little bit extra damage won't hurt then uh, moving to polarized beam this is um, another kind of utility attack it attacks primary target for a decent amount of damage with a little bit of extra piercing Apply Disrupted for two turns, apply Slow for two turns, and remove all positive effects. Now, the remove all positive effects is the Tier 4 upgrade. Uh, otherwise, it just removes two positive effects. Uh, the damage increase, too. Nothing crazy. But it's important to note that uh, the remove all positive effects occurs after it applies them. So if a character has immunity, it's very unlikely that many of these abilities are going to stick because it's going to remove them after. This attack being unavoidable is incredibly relevant. 
this is a tier 4 upgrade that matters more when you're fighting stronger characters, when you need to remove a ton of positive effects off a character, as opposed to uh, just, just, you know, doing a little bit of extra damage or you're fighting something at parity. That said, it's pretty reasonable, uh, especially with the focus increases you're getting from the full team, to upgrade this just to make sure that you can take all of the effects off of generic character that you just don't need. There's also a very good opening attack uh, against certain fights too, where you don't necessarily need to blind everybody because you're not worried about the damage they're doing. Uh, this will prevent those characters from actually doing any damage to you, uh, or that specific character from maybe buffing or taunting. This way you can kind of cherry pick the other characters off if you need to. Uh, and then of course we have Magnetic Force. Uh, this is the only damage ability that I would recommend maybe upgrading because you're going to be using this ability a lot uh, look at the cooldowns from the previous two magnetic vortex is like six that uh, polarized beam is four it's very unlikely and he's not particularly fast he can get fast if you know people are critting brotherhood characters but it, you're going to be leaning on this ability this is a pretty decent aoe ability it'll hit at least two targets possibly three for a small amount of damage you might want to increase this kind of like other characters where they do their major attack and then if you're uh, kind of at the point in a raid maybe like a gamma raid where you're just waiting for that ability energy to come back because you can't necessarily feed energy to magneto you probably do want a little bit extra damage on this but again it's not much if you want to check magneto's base stats damage is pretty okay now again i have a five red star magneto with ISO 8s, so it's pretty reasonable. Now, I'm not going to go into ISO 8s in great detail on him either, but I will say that uh, he doesn't really need healer or fortifier. He's not fast enough to take advantage of them. Uh, Striker is always a good option if you just need to increase damage, but since his damage is already pretty meh to begin with, I wouldn't necessarily feel like an extra 5% is too relevant. And doubling attacks that he does, not incredibly relevant. Uh, however, Skirmisher and Raider, both decent options. Uh, you know, Raider getting a little bit of extra crit chance since he's constantly hitting multiple targets means there's a chance he will be applying quite a bit of vulnerables to characters. And of course, Skirmisher is always a pretty decent ability just to either apply the vulnerable or take a buff off with a basic or a special um, in addition to what it is now obviously his special already clears all the buffs so it's not super relevant so i like raider on him uh, and of course you know getting characters to level three of whatever their their iso is the most important thing you can do on a character uh, so that's where i would go with but uh you can really kind of put anyone else here if you have a weaker magneto fortifier does stand to reason as a pretty decent way of keeping him alive if you notice he's dying but ultimately I think the best option for him is pretty much Raider without any other options. So, last thing I want to talk about is where he's useful. Just kind of go through him. So, Arena, the earlier you get him, the better off he's going to be against the Arena meta, just because of the way the team interacts. Even if you just use Magneto, Juggernaut, and Pyro, and the other two characters are like Hela and CM or Loki or, you know, whomever you happen to have at the time... That's going to be a relatively good, not only offense, but defense team. And the more you invest in them, the better value you're going to get. As you go into later and later versions of the game, he's not going to have as much value in Arena on his team. But I see still to this day in my Arena shard, I'll still see the occasional very strong Magneto play somewhere to kind of give a little bit of control against non-Black Order defenses. Now, that's completely up to you. Uh, that's so arena he gets value earlier and it falls a little bit off But there's still fights where having access to a magneto isn't necessarily going to be a problem You can also use just magneto and no other brother characters to apply blinds uh, After phoenix goes to uh, you make sure that everyone's blinded after she puts stealth on them So these are some pretty good options for him moving to war I really don't have to say much the brotherhood both 1.0 and 2.0 have been war offense deities since the beginning of the game um, and they're pretty much just good for a win against not only meta teams but any just relatively strong generic team that you can put up against so 
you're going to have a guaranteed war victory team with the Brotherhood, either version, This, you know, for the entirety of the time you have him. So the earlier you get him, the more you can start saying, well, at least I know I have one war win. You know what I mean? And that's when you're building a roster incredibly important. Even in the late game, I still use my Brotherhood every war against somebody. Um, let's see. Blitz, not really worth discussing, but obviously legendary character on a team tends to be an auto win in Blitz. This is one of the guaranteed, you know, 8-3 win teams if you're still trying to win an 8-3 in Blitz. Um, I don't recommend it, but the Brotherhood just works really well. Uh, and for raids, some people like to use him with a combination of characters like Symbiote Spider-Man or Hell to basically continuously extend blinds. Um, as you're punching up in harder difficulties, any version of Magneto, that blind can be incredibly relevant. So you get some value out of him. I don't recommend it, but you can use him there. And then, of course, uh, any node that requires a mutant or specifically the Gamma Ray where it requires Brotherhood characters, obviously you're going to do a lot better if you have Magneto, uh, especially because if you use Phoenix instead, she'll die and then you have to refresh her. Where Magneto, at least you can choose when you use his ability and blind people when it comes up uh, and is relevant. Kind of wish they had a more sustained healer, but the good thing about ISO 8s is, because they exist now, you can technically have a healer on any raid team whenever you decide, so totally reasonable. Uh, that's pretty... Oh, PvP, I think it goes without saying. I don't really like to talk about PvP, but... <laughs> he's, he's getting banned more often than not. Uh, he might be kind of a... A little overpowered in pvp especially with like a character like taskmaster or he's the kind of character you have to interact with so uh doing that pvp tournament we did a couple of weeks ago uh you'd see that magneto was one of the top banned characters whether it be the first two picks or after someone had selected them uh, he's kind of a big deal so that's it for his usability uh rating i'm gonna make this very plain and simple uh he's an a rating character but the only reason he gets just shy of S is it takes a long time for him to get value in certain game modes. You know, like he's obviously amazing in war. He's pretty okay in arena for a time. So, uh, but raids, you can use him. He will be helpful, but he's not good at raids. He's just kind of necessar. He's just kind of a raid necessity. So... He's A tier because of his overall strength and what you can do when you manipulate the way characters are placed on the field. That is probably the most powerful ability uh, we have. It's it's very close to Black Bolt's cough if a character is in red health uh, ability. So it's really strong. But because he's an older designed character, some of his damage hasn't scaled. Some of his... Uh, Effects haven't scaled. His team is great. He's great. So he's a character. I wish I can give him a higher rating, but you know, again, he's more important earlier, uh, and then you just kind of use him later as as the kind of game progresses. So hopefully that information was helpful. Uh, comment below and let me know, you know, what your Magneto is doing for you, and uh, hopefully uh, you're enjoying him. So he should be coming out real soon at, as of the time of this video, and if you're watching it like three months from now. He'll still be coming out real soon, so have a good night, have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch you later.